So this is part two of my journey back. I just did that interview. I didn't really expect to take so long, but it was an interesting interview. So I kind of had to cut it in two, otherwise you'd get bored, I think. Anyway, um, as I said, thanks to the airport. I think you can see the sign over there. That goes, takes me back, that's Montego Bay Airport, named after Donald Sankster. And I'm walking up the bottom road. They have bottom road and they have top road. And so I'm walking up here to go back to the hotel that I'm staying at. I got the breakfast, salt mackerel and food. And I got two drinks, ginger beer. And it only came up to 1200. That's bloody brilliant. See, if you know what to buy. Now if I get the five fish, they're $600 each. So they're probably, they're more expensive of course, but because I got the salt mackerel, I just hope he can eat it though, because he did tell me that he can only have salt mackerel if it's made with coconut, otherwise it runs his belly. So hopefully it works out okay. So anyway, this road, normally you'll hear people tooting. They're not tooting me because they fancy me. They're tooting because they're usually taxis and they're asking me if I need a ride home. I'm not really gonna take it because I don't know how much they charge. And when they hear my English voice, they might charge me treble. So I'll just walk it and get the exercise. Now this Hillshire Hotel that I'm passing now, this is closed down. You know, and if I had money, oh, I'd love to buy it, just so to keep some Jamaican steak in the country. Just to have a steak in Jamaica, you know, and share the wealth of all these white Jamaicans, Bermudans, Brits, and Americans who own the majority of the hotel business. Thing is, the Chinese are smart. The Chinese own the infrastructure, or they've invested heavily in the infrastructure. They've just spent, I think it was 224 million on um, the aluminium country, company, which is now going to be called JIS Co. So you know, once they own the aluminium, them done mech. So they've also invested in the Belt Road Initiative, AKA BRI. So the Chinese have got a big investment in Jamaica. And I, you can understand why if you come here, they say Jamaica's small. I have never seen a place so big. Honestly, it took me, well, over two hours from, from Antigua Bay to Westmoreland. I wanted to see my brother in uh, Clarendon because he was working down there. But that would be a three and a half hour drive. And for a non-Jamaican, and plus, you know, the roads and everything and we rented a car it wasn't a wise trip to make so we couldn't get to see him my other brother who's in Christiana same thing I thought once we went to Westmoreland that Clarendon and Christiana would be not too far away but it was like another two and a half hour drive and then we have to get back by nightfall so we had to give it a miss and sacrifice seeing my brothers. But that's how it goes sometimes. I think next time I'll stay in Kingston because Kingston is closer to Clarendon and all those places. I didn't realize that Montego Bay was one end of the country and everything else is the other end. I never realized that until this this trip anyway i've learned quite a lot oh that stinks i've learned quite a lot um and 
yeah I'm glad I did that interview with that guy because you know sometimes I didn't want to come here and not do any interviews but I bought my video camera but it kept on saying card and I didn't realize that you needed a card in order to make it work and of course I didn't buy one did I so that was a bit silly of me so anyway this is some of these roads they say the roads are dangerous but All right. you are did I drop that oh, yeah okay. no I'm cool Huh? Oh! Yeah, cool. Two more days. Alright. That was the guy for the car and I didn't even recognise him. Uh. Yes, yeah, so. Uh. That's a bus coming down and you see the Jamaican flag on top of the bus. Don't know what kind of bus that is. Could be a local bus. There's another one. That's a tropical tours bus. So they have local buses, they have tour buses, and they have um, what else? All well, different kind of buses to be honest. And then they've got the taxis. They've got um, this um, coach that takes you anywhere you want to go like from Montego Bay to Kingston for a thousand Jamaican which is brilliant it's about ten dollars and it also stops it also stops sorry catching my breath I'm going up a hill yeah it also stops at so you can get something to eat visit craft markets it's called I think it's called Randstad tours or something like that it begins with an R but yeah, so this is my trip back. I like to do this in the morning because otherwise my man likes to drive and I don't get no exercise. So, so that's that. Anyway, I'm nearly back. Can you see over there? That's what you call three dimensional. So we've got here, we've got, let's see, who you see down there? I don't really want to go too close. You got down there and then it kind of goes all the way over there. I'll tell you something, Jamaica nice enough. Seriously. If we as black people, Jamaicans, had money to invest in Jamaica and we had the hotels. I mean to be honest, my partner's auntie owns a hotel that we went to see yesterday in Greenwood. It's called the Lidonna. It's a beautiful, it's 29 rooms, but it's so nice. You know, it's not lavish and all that, but it's got the beautiful shiny tiles. It's clean, you've got decent sized beds. You've got single and you have treble um, rooms. You've got rooms that can accommodate a family of four and things like that so yeah it really is nice so some of English people didn't listen to the media about how bad Jamaica is of course there's bad good and bad everywhere because when we went down to um what do you call it where did we go yesterday we went to we went past Duncan's to Falmouth that's it and when we went to Falmouth we saw a guy put a gun into his waist but it wasn't intimidated I didn't think oh my god you know what I mean he wasn't just willy-nilly doing whatever he was doing we were driving through I don't know why he might be out in the first place but you wouldn't buy a place in Falmouth then put it that way probably not but you'd buy a place in Mandeville you'd buy a place in Runaway Bay you'd buy a place in Montego Bay when I say a place I don't mean a place I mean a place where you can make money like a hotel or a guest room and you cater for your people in you know what I mean you're not catering for the tourists but you'd have to start off with a lot of money to start off with 
so and you wouldn't be exploiting the local people either because hopefully you would have enough money if you invested in this to give people a decent wage so they can earn a decent living and look after their family as it is with all things just dirty up my jumper as it is with all things you know it's only you'll always find people who are begrudgeful and who might envy you but I think it's more to do with your attitude than anything else if you treat people civilly and you don't go on like you're a top honoris you don't disrespect anybody you don't go on like you're better than anybody I think you'll be fine but I tell you something if I won the luxury I've seen the guest house I would buy and it's at the it's at dead end and it's um it's for sale the property is for sale already so it's just there waiting for me to win the luxury but anyway I think I've got about maybe about five or ten minutes walk left look over there look at the depth so down there is bottom road and that's where all the tourists are if you walk if you walk down that road that leads you to like Dr. Caves Beach and all of the shops where all the tourists are. You've got the Wexford Hotel down there. You've got the Pelican Inn. You've got Margaritaville. I think it's under renovation. You've got the casino down there. And yeah, you've got all of those places. That's on Bottom Road at the bottom there. I've walked it down there all the way down to the bottom. It's a long walk and thank God we got a, a lift back. But we've done that. And then yesterday we went into Montego Bay Centre and the big shops them are run by Chinese or Indians and it's not even the Indians, the Jamaican Indian, you know are the Indians from India talking the Indian accent that shocked me because I thought that the Indians were Jamaican Indians like what they call the coolie but it's not so yeah so the Chinese own all the big shops and I must admit I did say I weren't going to buy from them but I wanted to get something for my granddaughter and I wanted to get something for my daughter and the, the clothes that they have that the tradesmen the local tradesmen sell are just so ordinary you know what I mean enough everywhere you go you see them so they're not different I mean I still gave them some of my I still did gave them some of my patronage but not to the degree I would have liked to had they been a bit more ingenious when I went to Ocherias they had a raster man and he had his little um, place where he does his artwork I did buy a piece of his work and um, I bought a bracelet and he gave me one free for my, for my patronage and I bought a sculpture and I was quite pleased with that so yeah I went to um, Ocherias craft market that was good and so yeah but like I said they're all around the back you have to really look for them so if you come into Jamaica and you see all the storefronts with all the expensive um, items see if you can go around the back they're not 100% cheap but at least you can bargain with them you can't really bargain with the storefronts they're like let me see if I can cross this road. Oh, it's not a really good place to cross. No, I'm not going to cross there. Because there's no... That's one thing, you know. There's no walkway. So, no, that wouldn't have been a wise move. So I'm going to go to past the lights. And you see where that schoolboy is walking? I'm going to walk up there. And that's more safer. No point taking unnecessary risks. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this journey with me. For me to go and get my breakfast and I hope you've loved the scenery as I've been walking around what is it? nothing I can cross Whee! done it so now I'm back at the hotel I'm gonna take you to the door and then I'm gonna say bye for now this is a school here this massive building is a school well I think it's a school Sometimes you see a lot of kids hanging out there, but I'm not even sure if it's a school because it seems a bit quiet. I don't see no movement. So 
so yeah but that boy i don't know where he looks like he looks like he's going to the school so maybe it is a school um down there if you go down there that leads you to montego bay but the other end of montego bay um and yeah i think you can tell i'm exhausted thing is going down is all downhill coming up is all uphill and so this is i think it's a school i don't see no names i don't know exactly what it is but it's right next door to the grandiosa where i'm staying and like i said i wouldn't recommend anybody come to the grandiosa um, until maybe december january or next year it should be finished because it's really hard to condone to condone the drilling because they're renovating it and from nine o'clock in the morning to six o'clock in the evening there's drilling the wi-fi connection isn't good and even when it is because of the drilling you can't get to really speak to anyone because they can't hear you and you can't hear them but other than that the service is impeccable the sheets are clean you have to make sure all those spiders that welcome you when you come in at night are off your front door otherwise they'll come underneath the door and bite you i think i've got about 30 mosquito bites or should i say 30 insect bites anyway that's all for now peeps bye